Welcome back to part four, and we are going to be discussing labs and diagnostics during a clinical trial, everything you need to know. Now, a lot of the times you will see that in clinical trial positions, they ask you to have a nursing license, but at the same time, they might ask you to have some laboratory experience. Now, what that could mean is something more clinical, like you being able to draw blood, but it could also mean something more in the lab backend stuff, such as you being able to process blood. So a lot of the times what happens is for international clinical trials, um, some preliminary blood processing has to be completed in order to you know, prepare the blood work or prepare the urine sample or the sputum sample or whatever sample it is in order to be shipped. If you just take raw blood and ship it, a lot of the time it can go bad on the way. Sometimes they want you to spin it down in a centrifuge, separate a part of it in, as a serum, transfer it, and then you know ship it frozen or ship it in a certain way. So in those cases, it's really important that your site has that kind of laboratory capacity. The laboratory itself might need to be in biosafety level one, two or three level, depending on what kind of blood it is. Is it infectious? Is it not? It's human blood. So certain um, certifications and you know laboratory credentialing has to be done in order to make sure the lab is up to date. It's not being used for diagnostic purposes. Um, then adequate laboratory training has to be done, whether it is you yourself you're doing it or somebody else on your team is doing it some kind of laboratory safety officer has to be there who can manage a sudden spillage what happens if like a tube breaks you know and what is the biohazard protocol of your lab so all of these things you have to have some basic knowledge on and if you're lucky enough to be in a big team there's usually specific people specific staff who are allocated to handle the blood part and it doesn't have to be you it can be somebody else on your team who's just dedicated to you know process all of the blood work and ship all of the blood work on the other hand it might be you sometimes you don't have to process much you just have to make sure the tubes are just like shaken well and shipped to a specific diagnostics place so it really depends on the protocol of this pharma sponsor so that was a very quick little clip about what you need to know. If you do have some basic laboratory skills, for example, during your undergrad or high school, you've done some centrifuging, you've done some plating, definitely mention them in your interview and like say, you know, I know some pipetting, I know some this, I know some basic lab safety handling, you know, training, I'm eager to learn more. Because a lot of the times it's not worth for smaller teams to hire extra people just to do the blood work. But a lot of the times it becomes essential if you have like such a heavy patient visit, that the trial coordinator is like completely busy administering the drug and taking care of the patient and the blood usually is time sensitive. Once you draw it, it needs to be processed pretty fast. So in those cases, you need to have two people to kind of tag team. Okay, once I draw the blood, you can take it to the lab and start the processing. I'll keep staying with the patient because a lot of the times you can't leave the patient alone depending on their health condition or depending if there's no other nursing or PSW support available. So just think of all of those things when you're thinking of labs and stuff. In terms of diagnostic testing, some some pharma sponsors will allow you to run the diagnostic testing at the local level, at the site level. Um, so they'll just say, okay, order these three tests at your site and send us the report. So you can probably get it done locally, or you can have a specific vendor, some private companies who'll do the blood work for you and they will approve it. On the other hand, there are some very strict pharma sponsors who's like, no, we're gonna do it at our central lab in this city, in this country. So every time you have a patient visit, you have to draw the blood, draw the urine, draw the sputum, process it, ship it just like this on this day of the week and make sure it reaches at this time with FedEx or with any other, you know, very high priority kind of service, which all has to be approved and paid for by the pharma sponsor. And they will only get all of the blood from all of these different cities and countries processed in one lab. So there's not a lot of variability in their results. So that might also be something else. That's something I personally had to do. So it can look a lot of different ways. So always go back to your protocol. But in an interview, if they want you to understand, tell them, you know, you know, sometimes it's done locally at the site level. It can be done with a vendor or it can be done internationally wherever the pharma sponsors um, central lab is. It can be in a different city than you or wherever. It might need to be shipped. So that's it for our video number four on labs and diagnostics as part of this crash course on clinical trial coordination and management. Now I'll see you again for part five.